Welcome to Movie Uppers. My name is Bob Sham. My name is Angela. The sound here may be dogs, and this month we're taking a little European vacation. All month long, movies from the old world, our old world, the the, the old world of the whites. Can we give it up for whites? <laughs> Stop it. Uh, no, not really. I'm, that's a joke. Well, I mean, we are in one of the white capitals of the world here uh with this episode this is germany Mm -hmm. though the 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 arab immigrant population is pretty well represented as a part of the Mm -hmm. tapestry of life in west berlin which is kind of nice yeah we're taking our european fat asses over to berlin for a Vim Vendors film from 1987 we're discussing wings of desire which is written by Vim Vendors, peter hankey and richard Ratinger, starring Bruno Ganz, Salvig de Martin, Otto Sander, Peter Falk, and Kurt Boy, cinematography by Henry Alakan. They actually remade this movie in America in the early 90s. No, it was the late 90s. It was, yeah. It was called City of Angels. It starred Meg Ryan and... Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. I was in high school when this came out, and I went on a date with my first girlfriend... To see this movie and she got upset because the scene in which Meg Ryan outstretches her arms and closes her eyes while on a bike going downhill and gets hit by a logging truck. I cackled loudly in the theater when that occurred and she was very upset. (laughs) I probably would have been upset with you at the time as well because I did like this movie at the time. Now... I would also laugh. It is hilarious. And there is a reference to that in this movie. Or they were referencing yeah, when he's, the line in this movie when he says, riding a bike with no hands. That's why they did that fucking shit. Yeah, he's talking about the things he'd like to do if he were a human being. And yeah. yeah he's like, I want to do the thing that killed riding Meg Ryan no in the hands. remake of this movie. Yeah, and she deserved to die. The contrived nature. I felt like at the time, I mean, I haven't seen that movie in 20 years plus, right? City of Angels. It seemed a little contrived, like this guy's supposed to be from heaven, but he gives two shits about anything on earth. It seems like it really undersells the afterlife. This movie feels a lot sweeter than that. I don't think I'm completely on board with the contrivances, even in this one, at least that concept, but it does manage to be a lot sweeter, and uh, the, the conveyance of the uh, Damio, who's played by Bruno Gantz, his curiosity, you feel it more. It, it seems a little more believable, his curiosity. Well, in the remake, very quickly, he says, I want to be a person and I want to fuck that woman. This movie takes its time, as Vim Vendors does. You really get to know him as an angel. There's so long in this movie when it is black and white before you see a glimpse of color when you realize, oh, that's what the people see. It felt so old. The opening shot of him standing and it's kind of fuzzy looks like something from a from a Fritz Lang movie, like an old silent movie. There were moments when I wondered if he was doing that because they are obviously out of time, right? Because they are there, but they've been there forever. They talk about Since at one point before how they Berlin were even there existed, yeah. Before people existed, before there when it was watered, no land. And they're angels. I don't know if we've made that clear. And what they seem to do is they're like antidepressant angels. They go around and give people a little perspective out of their dreariness. And they, well, they observe. They talk about that. They are only meant to be there, observe, record. They're the historians of heaven, it seemed like. And yes, they can comfort people. They comfort, he comforts a woman who's in labor at one point. He comforts a man who's dying. He's on an airplane, which is where we first meet. Peter Falk. Yes, Peter is Falk is in this movie. Wonderful in this movie. I don't even understand this character. It's amazing how little I know about this part. Maybe we'll discover it during the shoot. Well, get a good costume. That's half the battle. Berlin. Emil Jennings. Kennedy. Von Stauffenberg. Hell of a guy. That wasn't in Berlin. What difference does it make it happen? 
all my hats are being hung on all the Peter Fox scenes. I mean, I think this is a beautiful movie, beautifully shot, very artful, very sweet, very sincere. I'm just on board for Peter Falk. He's just one of those guys that I always like. I was pleasantly surprised at how much we saw him. And I liked the sort of winky aspect of his character. Are you saying winky because he has that eye? Is that why you... Wow. <laughs> No, but it is like, and it is cheesy. It's a little cheesy. There are some moments at the beginning. We do see wings on our main angel that we're following. He's always hanging out on this statue. But they they disappear, and he is always hanging out on a statue. His friend, he has a close friend that he hangs out with Cassiel. most often. Cassiel. He's also hanging out on a statue a lot of the times. There is one scene where it feels. I mean, a lot of this is pretty heavy handed, but there is a moment where he walks and there's a statue right behind him of wings that it's like, hey, just in case you didn't know after the first hour of this movie, he's an angel. This is what <laughs> this is what I mean when I say that this one isn't totally free of the contrivances that I criticized the remake for so long ago. It just does a better job at representing. It's just better shot and paced better in a way that makes you feel more of the humanity of the movie. Absolutely. It's more, like you said, sweet is the perfect word. It's sweet. It takes its time. You really understand by the time he becomes human why he wants that so badly. And it's interesting to see his friend struggling with that as well. Cassiel's struggling with it as well, but he's not willing to make that leap. This one felt so much more hopeful. Even though it's very much a Berlin movie, and pointedly so, there it, it, there does feel something very Western about it in like the concept of angels going around and helping people. I, I think it, of course, would be very different as it was when they remade it in the U.S. But the idea of... Oh, an angel goes around and he falls in love with a lady and he wants to be a human. That kind of sounds like some 50s romantic comedy concept, doesn't it? It does. The reason this one was even better is that he's already having those feelings before he sees her. That takes him to the next level, but we get to know him already having those thoughts before we get there. But yes, it is a very old feeling. Vin Vendors lived in the U.S. for eight years before he came back to Germany to make this movie. This is our second Vin Vendors movie. Our first one we discussed was Paris, Texas, which we consider a masterpiece. And if you're wondering where Paris, Texas is, it is lumped into our very first movie review six-pack episode, where... And most of our six packs have themes, but that one was very random. It was early in the show, and it was just a bunch of movies we had seen recently, and we wanted to do something with them. So yeah, on our very first six pack is like Paris, Texas, Citizen Kang, Thor, yeah. Love and Thunder, Don't Worry Darling yeah. is on there. Um, a documentary is on there and Speak No Evil, which they are remaking that in the U.S. There's trailers out for that now. It's got the, the guy who played Professor X in the newer X-Men movies. He plays, well, no spoilers, but go listen to, go find our early movie review six pack and we discuss all of that, including Paris, Texas, which is an S tier movie. Which dad does he play? The bad one. Okay. Damiel, he wants to be a human being, but the way he describes it, he's like, I want to do... All these things. He's not necessarily like he's romanticizing them, but he's not saying things as though humans are only one romanticized way. Mm -hmm. He talks about how like, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to just be so casually evil and like little things like that. He wants to experience everything that he sees as flaws in human beings at the same time. He gets a twinkle in his eye when he talks about lying. What is his heaven? Is he just, are these just like angel ghosts wandering around Berlin? Do they ever have to report back? They write everything in a little book. Cause we see Cassiel at some point writing things in a book. We never see them report. They all seem a little unhappy unless they're with a person. That's the feeling I got from them. They're all taking their jobs very seriously. They talk about how they have to be so serious. I did get the impression that they have truly just been wandering earth watching people for yeah. Thousands, millions of years. Peter Falk is an actor. He's billed as the film star, making a movie about the Nazi era of Germany. And we also get image flashbacks of 
the destruction, the remnants of the destruction as they're picking up the pieces of post-war Germany, concentrating on all the struggles that Germany has been through. That will be a theme in post-war German films forever Mm -hmm. to this day. And also, Peter Falk is just so sweet to everyone on this set. He, like, draws an image of the extra. I wonder if she's Jewish. What a dear face. Interesting. What a nostril. A dramatic nostril. These people are extras. Extra people. Extras are so patient. They just sit. Oh, and the angels can read everyone's That's, thoughts. Yeah. So, which is really a nice touch, taking in everyone's feelings by how they think about things. And Peter Falk is just talking about how he admires these extras and how he wants to draw this lady. And but he also, at one point, senses the presence of Damiel. I can't see you, but I know you're here. I feel it. You've been hanging around since I got here. I wish I could see your face. Just look into your eyes and tell you how good it is to be here. Just to touch something. I want you to know that I am a friend. And he says, uh, he holds out his hand and he says, I wish you were here. I wish you could talk to me. Because... I'm a friend. Compañero. Later, he says the same thing to Cassiel, and Cassiel does not take his hand, and Peter Falk's face says, okay, you're not ready yet. Because he says to him, there's so many things I wish I could tell you. So the thing that pushes Damiel over the edge in terms of wanting to become a human, he encounters a trapeze artist, this lady uh, played by Solvig de Martin. But the circus is closed down. It's all defunct. So she's a little lost. You know, she's when we see her, it's like she's saying goodbye to this trapeze artist life that she doesn't get to have. So what is next in her life? She has no idea. But he does fall in love with her. And it, but it's done in a way that isn't so drawn out. It's just a very poetic way. You could tell just by the way he's looking at her and he keeps going back and forth to her. And she ultimately is the reason why he decides to do this. But he's not 100% focused on her. He's still going and visiting Peter Falk. He's still going to the library. He's around the world There are angels all over the library. Angels are gendered. There's lady angels. Yeah. Are they gendered? I rewound the first library scene when I realized that all the angels were looking up directly at the camera so that we knew because they all are wearing trench coats with scarves. Oh, and, and I think that carries through And the children remake. can see them. Yeah, children can see them. And Which so is a nice touch. there's a part where he's at the circus and there's a little girl next to him who's talking to him the whole time. Yeah. It's adorable. To become human, he has to jump off the statue that he hangs out on all the time. And then he wakes up and he's in color. It's it's in black and white a lot of the time. And when we get flashes of the humanity that focus on the human moments, especially when we first meet Marion, like that's when the color starts to pop in and out. Mm -hmm. And then when Damiel crashes to earth and he gets up and he's bleeding a little and he's all in color. And what he uh, initially does is Peter Falk recommend... He was talking about at one point how coffee and cigarettes are amazing. He's bleeding because his armor got thrown out of heaven on top of him. Yeah. So he has got hit with the armor, but that's the only thing he has. He pawns his armor for money, and he goes and he gets a cup of coffee. I wanted him to think it was disgusting. I kind of did, too, and I wondered, because he made like a curious face when he first sipped it. I think an interesting remake of this movie would not be City of Angels style, but... Where he becomes human and then it's like everything sucks. His senses are overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. He like the woman he's in love with, once he gets closer and smells like her perfume, like it's such a foreign sensation that he finds it to be like disgusting. It was such a lovely little <laughs> moment when he touched his head and realized he was bleeding and he tasted it and he said, It has a taste. Yeah. He's been 
looking at people for so long and everything's been in black and white, no smells, no touches, no sense. They can sometimes pick up an item and hold it in their hand, but it's not real. It's like they can there should have get been, a sense of that item. There should have been a scene where he's freaking out that he's getting a boner or something. Like, what's going about on? That. When he first saw her, I was like, is he getting hard right yeah, now? Yeah, if he's getting hard, he should, shouldn't he be scared of what's happening in his pants? He's very lucky in that the first person he encounters is very sweet to him because he comes up with this blood on his hand and says, is this red? And the man says, yes, that's red. And he starts pointing out there's this... Very interesting murals all over the walls. They're it's now the, in color. It's the Berlin Wall. It is the Berlin when Wall. When he first crashes and he's walking along. And he says to him, like, what's that color? What's that color? And this man's very patient and explains all the colors to him. He goes, I want to drink a cup of coffee. And the man says, do you have money? And he, he doesn't. So the man gives him money and says, have a great day. And it's just very sweet. Nowadays, people would just be like, oh, this guy's autistic. If you <laughs> if someone came up to you and was like, is this red, the blood? You'd be like, <laughs> what's that? Happening. No, I'd be like, I'd lick the blood off of his Ew, hands. That's just a, me. It though. has a taste. Yeah, metal, coppery. <laughs> so he goes to the set where Peter Falk is filming his movie. After he's got his like very bright jacket on and he bought a watch. And Peter instantly understands that this is who he sent. Hey, compañero. He yelled, he said, compadre. I'm so happy to see you. And he comes over and he shakes his hand. I can give you a few dollars just to tide you over. I have money. I sold something. The armor. Right? What'd you get for it? Uh, 200 bucks. You got robbed. But that happens. And Peter Falk reveals... You were... Yeah. You are... Oh, yeah. He was once one of them. He was once ago. an angel. I think that's what's the sweetest of this movie and why I love the Peter Fox stuff yeah. so much. Because it's also like it ends up being in a weird memoriam to him mm -hmm. because he's been gone a long time. You know, he was such an interesting, unique character actor. It, it just it gave me warm feelings just to see him in particular. Like I'll always love I'll always like this guy. I'll always be fascinated by him. He's kind of like um, like Harry Dean Stanton in yeah. that way. A guy who was an, in another Vim Vendors movie, Paris, Paris Texas, S-tier masterpiece. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's that same feeling. Like, you can't go wrong ever seeing these guys, right? He's such a warm presence. Even his thoughts are so sweet. It's hard to imagine that he's any different than how, in real life, and how he is represented here. A couple of people even refer to him as Columbo. There is a part where he meets the girl towards the end, and she calls him Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah. It's very sweet. I actually fell asleep last night trying to watch some Columbo. Some old I, Columbo yeah, episodes. Yeah, I, I turned the TV off. Just because I was thinking about him. <laughs> Damiel goes out to search for the lady that he knows he loves, that he wants to encounter. He once followed her to a concert. So he sees a poster for, it's the Bad Seeds. Nick Cave Nick and the Cave. Bad Seeds. And when he first sees her at the club as an angel, she's watching uh, uh, the band Crime and the City Solution. And then later, when he's a human, they're at the same club seeing a Nick Cave and the Bad Seed show. Both of those bands are Australian. Cool. I, they just are. It's just Australian music in this movie. Cassiel is there. And he's watching them because he knows that this is who Damiel loves. And he sees that she's there, but Damiel doesn't know. So he has he's up on stage with Nick Cave. He's also hearing Nick Cave's thoughts, the band's thoughts, because he can hear all this stuff. And there's one point where you realize that he also feels trapped. But again, he's not ready to make any kind of change. He becomes so overwhelmed that at one point... Earlier, we've seen him kind of cover his ears because he doesn't want to hear anybody anymore. And in that scene, he walks to the wall and puts his head against the wall like he's trying to disappear. He's going through his own thing. That's sort of what I thought at the end it says to be continued. And maybe that's his story. Damiel goes to the bar. And then Marion eventually makes her way after hearing the set. We hear like... A couple of Nick Cave songs. And she goes there and she does this monologue. This reminds me of the the Natasha Kinski monologue 
in Paris, Texas. A woman's got to make a monologue in a Vin Vendors movie. She talks about how, you know, she's never felt loneliness. She's never been alone. She's never lived alone. No, but she's, she's, oh, she's always been lonely, but she's never been lonesome. But being lonesome signifies that, you know, you have a love or it's like a reaction to a love or a need for someone. And when she encounters um, Damiel, she realized that now she has that capacity as she sees him. It seems a little bit like we're together now, but the sweetness and the, the humanity is built up so well throughout the movie that you get it. She does also say when she's nearing the end of her speech, she tells him, now you have to also decide. I've decided, but you have to also decide. This is a decision that we're making. And she talks about it as though it's bigger than just the two of them, that it matters for the whole world. But there is at least that acknowledgement of maybe they were drawn together, but they could make, in this case, what would be considered the wrong decision yeah. to not be together. They have to make sure they're in. And she implies that once you say yes... That's it. We end the movie with Cassiel, who's been observing this older man. And this man used to be an entertainer, right? And he's nearing the end of his life. Who will entertain the kids? Who will, who will entertain the people once he's gone? And the movie ends on him pondering his own mortality as he understands that he is nearing the end. That's the end of the movie. It says to be continued, but there is no sequel. I don't know. There is a part also, and this is the only time they do it where Damiel is with Marion and she's he's holding the rope for her to do. Mm. She's like going around and around and around. And Cassiel is sitting on the stairs. And it's the only time in the movie where half the screen is in yeah, color nice and the touch. other half is in black and white. And you do get this idea that he's always going to be around them. And I believe even at one point Damiel speaks to him. So there is still this connection, but they can't really talk. And that is Wings of Desire from 1987 by Vim Vendors. I don't think this is perfect like Paris, Texas is perfect. No. I think there is a great sweetness. It's uh, beautifully shot. But I do think there's like a heavy handedness that that comes in and creeps in. It's it's uh it's more it's 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 more positive than negative, but ultimately I think I can fall on a four and with the Peter Falk effect. I had a point two five, so that's a four point two five for Wings of Desire. I'm gonna match you because I was also gonna say a four, but I'm going to double down on the Peter Falk. The plus Peter two Falk five. effect adds a point two five. Yeah. Take a peek at the list, folks. At an eight point five, Wings of Desire, Easy A is just under the movies The Searchers, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and Wild at Heart. Wings of Desire by Vim Vendors. Its sincerity brings it to an eight point. It stays European all month long, and we got a, a French New Wave, our second genre Melville movie. We will be discussing this Friday, The Samurai, which is all swag. It's an all swag feature. Check the show notes for links to other places to find us. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. What do you think of Wings of Desire? What do you think of City of Angels? Do you think it's as good as its uh, predecessor? Do you Did you laugh when Meg Ryan got plowed by a... Um, a logging truck. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.